My name is Daniel Duque, the ultrasound director. Yeah. And I am going to be demonstrating the proper technique to visualize the inferior vena cava. All right, so what Danny's doing here is he's just taking a uh, curvy linear three to five megahertz probe. He's aiming the indicator towards the head. He's placing it just under the xiphoid process. And then he's just sliding one to two centimeters to the patient's right. So that's the deal. Probe goes just under the xiphoid. Slide one to two centimeters to the patient's right. And just tilt towards the heart. So let's go through the normal anatomy you'll then see on your ultrasound screen. So what you see is you see a IVC, the black thin walled structure underneath the liver, and you're getting just a cut of the heart, the right atrium. And that's key. That's the proper position when you have just a little bit of the heart there. All right. Now you see that arrow? That's measuring one centimeter past the hepatic vein towards the patient's feet. That's where you want to look at the IVC. If you can't see that, then you just go about two to three centimeters from the heart border. So just to review that anatomy one more time, that thin black vascular structure is the IVC, liver's on top of it, and you're getting just a tiny cut of the heart. About one centimeter past the hepatic vein, or two to three centimeters from the heart edge, is where you look at the IVC. This IVC is collapsing nearly completely, but anything greater than 50% is a patient who's gonna be responsive to fluid. So that's been the most validated number. If the IVC collapses more than 50%, give them some fluid. I would tell you if it's greater than 30%, which is really uh, what you could easily see with your eye, I would probably, in most cases, give them fluid. So if you're really seeing any significant collapse, then the patient needs fluid. All right, we gave that patient four liters of fluid. Look at the IVC now. No respiratory collapse. If we look just past the hepatic vein, that IVC is not collapsing with respiration. It's staying pretty much identically sized throughout the respiration cycle. This patient doesn't need fluid. All right, another patient who has near complete or certainly greater than 50% collapse of their IVC with respiration, patient needs fluid. All right, we gave that patient two liters. We take a look at the IVC again. It's bigger, but it's still collapsing greater than 50%. More fluid needed. Here's another patient that needs fluid. IVC collapsing just past that hepatic vein with respiration. All right, we gave that patient six liters of fluid. Look at the IVC now. No respiratory collapse. Staying just about the same size. All right, just one key point to understand about all this. Fluid unresponsive does not mean fluid loaded, all right? It just means the patient is not gonna increase their cardiac output with fluid. That's what the collapsing of the IVC tells you. Sometimes you'll have a patient with negative inotropy secondary to their septic state who will not be fluid responsive um, and their IVC will not collapse. But then you give them some inotropy with some calcium or dobutamine all of a sudden their heart's pumping better. If you look at their IVC again, it will start collapsing and that patient then needs more fluid.